Goodwill Hunting did that. <laughs> right. You mentioned at MIT. He decided to be a janitor at MIT. Not by his choice, but... And he loves apples. And he loves apples. Natural Order Podcast, episode 20. This is third, potentially second grade math. At the latest, fourth grade math. Oh, certainly not sixth grade. You're dumb. You're just dumb if you don't know that. That's apathy to the highest degree. Welcome to the Natural Order Podcast with your hosts, Ryan O'Leary and Adam Heyman. Natural Order Podcast once again. Brian O'Leary here with you, along with Adam Heyman. Hey, happy Valentine's Day, buddy. Post-Valentine's. Get my post-Valentine's. Day uh, after. Yeah, day after. Yeah. Uh, all right. So you sent out in your email, which everybody should get on, at, from the Heyman Nature podcast uh, the other day. Yeah, it's heymannature.substack.com. Uh, okay. And... So what we, I, I found it interesting. We want to talk about it. So we already talk, planned on talking about this subject to some degree, but the the question is, what is 15 times four? And the context is, <laughs> uh, duh. But the, also the context is, this was an interview, a man on the street type interview at, I think it was Kennesaw State University. And there were four or five college students around there. And none of them, if they did know the answer, they did not express it in the correct form. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so go ahead, go ahead, Adam. I, I, I need to collect myself here for a moment. Well, <laughs> as you should, we'll find a link to this thing and get it to you in the show notes, folks. But I'll give it a quick rundown. Um, it was that it was billed to be Kennesaw State University, three young adult College students are in frame. In the interview, you were just asked, what's 15 times four? And these four looked flummoxed and a little embarrassed and a little ashamed. Someone guessed 23 uh, <laughs> unconfidently, and th there was some agreement. And then the leader of the group, um, one of the girls, it was three girls and one guy, uh, suddenly confidently says, uh, uh, it's 48. 48, it's 48. And then the others quickly chime in. Yeah, I'll say 48 with her. Yeah, 48, definitely 48. What is 15 times 4? 15 times 4. Oh, gosh. It's 23. 23? 28, 48. 48. It's 48. I'll say 48 with her. I'll say 48. Why did I say 48? And, uh, I mean, I don't know, Brian, have you... Have you witnessed any other seeming breakdowns in American higher education? Or is this, There's a lot is this the it. first time you've seen any chinks in the armor? Well, I just don't know what the point of going to college is if you can't figure out. This is third, I mean, potentially second grade math at the latest yeah, fourth gonna... grade math. <laughs> you shouldn't be able to get to sixth grade without being able to quickly answer this question. Oh, certainly the not sixth least. grade. Yeah. I, I, I would least. say like get, getting into fit like if, because, well, I mean, we can go on and on about this, but my question is how did you, or why did you come across this video originally? Is it a tr Twitter scroll or? Yeah. The algorithms know what I like <laughs> and they give it to me good and hard. Um, <clears throat> the reason I made the, I wrote the sub stack at it and, and sent it out wasn't so much that, I mean, the pithy point I made was you think these students are paying all this money and, and learning nothing. And I disagree. They're learning something very important, which is to conform. Okay. Yeah. And, and that's, that should horrify you to be to confidently to conform, to repeat back beliefs that obviously they don't believe they don't know. They're, they have an opinion and they will tell you and they'll vote that that way. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the whole thing just creeped me right out. Yeah. Do you think they're conforming to the answer or this is like a social, this is like a social thing where it's clearly there's, there's no 
real power for the university there. There is a power structure with what whoever the the dominant alpha person in this group is expressing the right answer. But is that are you saying that's what we're we're taught? We're taught to conform, or not us, but the the students these days are more likely to conform to this power dynamic, whether it's top down from the university or within peer groups? I mean, I think when you and I went to public school and if that's where you went and then university, I think we were taught a little something about the American ethos back then, which was uh, individualism and critical thinking. And there was probably some groupishness and some conformity back then too, because there kind of always is in our species. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't think it was ideological. I think it was just, it's dangerous to be in the out group. Um, And if there's, if I think these institutions have been controlled by leftist dogma and it's never been more true (laughs) than it is now that you don't want to get yourself on the out group. Um, and against uh, against the mainstream. So it's not like <clears throat> they didn't care what the answer was. They just right. didn't want to be they didn't care. the black swan in the midst of all the white swans, because that's how you get killed. Right. Yeah, they didn't care about being right at all. Well, did not, not at all. Did not care. Did not it's care. not as if the one girl uh, convinced them with their mathematical proof that the answer was 48. But they still just said, oh, yeah, yeah, 48. I'm with her. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, was talk- I was talking this about this similar idea uh, about just about math, schooling, math, schooling with uh, a couple groups last night as we record. And, you know, the common refrain that I heard over and over is like, ah, why do I need math? I'm never going to use math. Why do I need to use, <laughs> you know, why do I need to use calculus? I'm never going to use calculus. And some people said, well, or one guy in particular said, well, he went into the whole idea of a speedometer because you can, it's immediate, immediate uh, reading of your velocity. You can't (laughs) just do that without some, a mathematical framework, calculus in particular uh, will help doing that. But the the other thing is like, oh, why do I need to know math? Why do I need to know my times tables? It's because of this stupid man on the street thing. You're dumb. You're just dumb. <laughs> if you don't know that, that's 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 apathy to the highest degree. And you know, I don't know how these people get by in schooling. Like those people would have been laughed out of school, shamed, shunned. Not because there was a bunch of nerds in my school. It's just like that is pretty easy to do if you can read a clock you know i gotta admit even back when i was going to school you did have lazy layabouts who you know they knew they weren't going to do anything super smart in their career and they would say hey why do i ever need to know this of course and i gotta admit the answer that came back was never satisfying and it could have been you know, they'd say right. things guess, like, yeah. like, like you said, just to be smart and, you know, and then they'd give some goofy word problems where, you know, you have to be a farmer and figure out the area of the yeah. area of your field that you want to, you know, and, you know, two cars traveling towards one another and blah, blah, blah. Or they'll say, you, well, you might grow up to be a scientist or an engineer. Yeah. Of course, the student knows that's not the case. <laughs> but what they could have said is understanding these concepts will help you understand every single thing that you come across in your entire life. And if you don't have this basic knowledge, you are just going to be an idiot. But yeah. And one of my comebacks to this whole discussion was that they never tell us these teachers or administrators or whoever, they never told us the principles behind what they were teaching us. They didn't tell us why we were doing math. You just got to do math because it's, it's part of the schedule. You do math. You do your times tables. Another fella said his parents were were are both educators and administrators in education. Hated. He said he thought he hated learning all throughout right. his uh, childhood. He said it wasn't until college where he realized it's not learning that I hate. I love learning. I hate school because these. It's just stupid. In a large, in many ways, <laughs> my mom is a 
was a public school educator for many years. And I I would intimate maybe that the, the whatever I was doing in school wasn't particularly good for me, <laughs> particularly enriching. I never outright said that. I mean, specifically said that recently. And she's like, oh, boy, I never knew you hated school so much. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't. I, there was probably two years in high school where I was actually really engaged because it was learning. I was I was enjoying the learning part. And but that was it. It was my first two years of high school. But after that, no. I mean, college was some to some degree, which is the topic we're on. College to some degree got me out of that once again, but it wasn't until I slogged through like the main what prerequisite courses that any anybody could have taught. And it wasn't until I got into finding out the good teachers and taking their classes that I really started thriving and really started enjoying learning again. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, and I think for most of our discussion, we're going to talk about what's ailing higher education. Mm -hmm. But just really quick, uh, what you were saying reminded me of one of our cohort in Tom Woods School of Life, uh, Bernie Jackson. He gave a great presentation about the distinction between math conceptually, you know, what you're doing with math, what it's, what it's trying to tell you about the world and what we're all taught in grade school specifically, which is just the rote mechanics of how you do the, the number crunching to arrive at an answer, which is so mind numbing and dull, you know, yeah. when it shouldn't be, it should be, it, it should be a way for you to understand, you know, how to think about the world, but instead it's just, no, he's, these are the rules you follow this procedure, a number falls out, and now you are good at math without, you know, telling you what you're doing it for. And, right. Uh, if we can find a link to it, it's a great presentation. Yeah, I'll, I'll, it's I'll a great to talk. It. Yeah. That's interesting because I, I was telling the same group last night, I, uh, I was always advanced in math. I was always placed in like the higher, more advanced math than most of my classmates. I never knew why. I guess I could just do the things. Like you said, just do the stuff better. I didn't necessarily understand what I was doing any better, but I could do the mechanics of it until it finally caught up with me. And when you're that advanced, you know, taking a couple grade levels up, you should be getting straight A's. I was kind of sure. maybe like an A would be lucky. It'd be a struggle. Like, why can't I just be back, you know, learning at my own pace as opposed to well, I mean, I'm ultimately thankful for it, but I ended up taking <laughs> the same math class in college that I'd taken probably as a sophomore in high school and did fine. I just didn't have to do a whole lot. I didn't have to do a whole lot extra, a whole lot of studying, but that was an advanced math class before I would go, unless I was a math major. That's what all I checked off my prerequisite there and spent a decent amount of time helping other students with their math homework where I could have done my own English homework, which I was struggling with. But anyway, <laughs> looking back, do you think that was satisfying your parents or maybe your nascent requests or were they trying to shove people up in grades just to fulfill a quota or something? I, I don't, I don't think any of the above actually, my parents didn't really care. I mean, it was like probably a feather in their cap that they've got an advanced kid. I didn't, I didn't care. I was just like, well, all right, I tested into it, um, rightfully or wrongfully, whatever. So I, so I did that stuff. Uh, at the time, you might be right with they wanted to get kids in different levels of math that it was appropriate for them. Now it's that's not on the board at all in the lower levels. They they kind of have the lowest common denominator, uh, and if everybody learns at his or her speed in all the courses. So like, yeah, this idea of 15 times four in today's age, not to say that across the board, but it's very possible that that's a real thing that happens that kids can't solve that problem by the time they get out of high school and somehow get accepted into college and go to college. I don't, I don't understand it, but I think that it's probably not out of the realm of possibility that that is the case that just, we just move on. There's no like hold, holding back of a child for not achieving right. the grade level. There's none of that anymore. 
They just send you well, on. Uh, you bring up a great point. Um, and I wasn't even going to talk about this, but yeah, it's the socialization of K through 12. That is the primary problem here. Because if you were a parent paying for the education of your student and this was the outcome and they were, they were passed on to the next grade, you'd have a, you'd have a tort <laughs> or at least ask your money back. Yeah. But since this is something that the government gives the student, uh, the citizenry, you know, it's a right. Well, now they just, <clears throat> there's no incentives for people to, to do the right thing. And in fact, they'll get yelled at if they, if they hold students back because I don't know, it'd be racist or classist or something awful. So you end up with the public socialist institution, just passing these students forward who can't do mm -hmm. the most basic thing. I remember, uh, our, my teacher in college complaining about it in, in the field of writing. Yeah. You know, my, my first English class, <clears throat> the teacher was just appalled at how criminally uh, incapable of creating basic sentence structures, much less paragraphs, much less essays that these kids coming out of high school and getting into everything was remedial. You'd constantly hear the refrain that these professors have to quickly do a bunch of remedial training just to get them up to where they should have been before they, Across the across the threshold, and it's not what they signed up for. They would sign up to teach advanced students, They're, you know, I, I guess. But that's that's not what college is anymore. I mean, college today is the probably at the challenge level of a high school or maybe even a middle school 150 years ago. Well, uh, at least it doesn't ways. cost very much, right? Yeah, and then it costs. Uh, what? <laughs> I mean, we're, we're paying, I don't even want to say, but a lot. And I went to expensive school and this is more than double what that was 25 years ago or more. And it's just, I don't understand it. No, it's bad. Um, I know he's known for being hyperbolic, but a few years ago, 2019, Mr. Bernie Sanders uh, went on to the Twitters to announce that uh, three thousand eight hundred percent is how much the cost of four-year public college has increased since nineteen sixty-four. Wow! And uh, that's not an accident, and that's not a market failure. That is government action, my friends. Bernie Sanders, of who I'm no fan, but one thing I will give him credit for is he can diagnose the problem very well. He's He's got his finger on that. A lot of the problems he talks about, he diagnoses the problem. His solutions are bat guano crazy <laughs> for the most part. He diagnoses half the problem. Half he goes on to say, in that time, how many bright young people gave up the chance at college education because they couldn't afford it? We will make public colleges and universities tuition free. Right. That's his solution. Tuition Oops. free. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, just the fact that he notices, a lot of people don't notice or care the, of, of the massive cost increase, which is killing uh, a lot of people. And you can't wipe off the ridiculous amount of debt with any uh, bankruptcy, not that you would want to do that, and, but with any uh, particular financial it is Help. curious that if bankruptcy is a thing that can be done in our legal system, that this particular debt cannot be washed away. Yeah. It's almost like there's a massive uh, um, moral hazard in, in play. Right. <laughs> of course there is. And and if you want to talk about you know the rising cost, again, it's not an accident. It's because the government has been massively distorting the market to shovel free money or cheap money or government-backed money at these institutions. And what do they think is going to happen? Well, they don't know. They're gonna, they don't, they they're don't gonna even think that prices. far down the line. I, I mean, that's part when of, that's I went part to of school, the problem. And you went to school, I think the government was just fully backing the, the student loans at, I think, a whopping I 8%, think. if I recall. But now they've just taken them over completely. Right. Um, or not completely. I guess the number I just recently saw was uh, that the government – was holding 90% of the, of the student debt that exists. Um, and I guess that the remaining 10 is just a vestige of when, <laughs> when, when you and I went to school. Yeah. I mean, private money's out there and not, I mean, it's pri those are probably private loans. They're probably not private educational loans, but they're, it's money that's fungible that's spent on education. I'm guessing, I don't know how it all works anymore, but it's whatever it is. It's, 
like, like you said, criminal. But I mean, getting back to criminal and the achievement of students getting into college, I think Oregon recently, I think we maybe even talked about it on the show before, they, they, there's like no standard anymore for reading or writing or math to graduate from high school. Like that got <laughs> eliminated uh, during the, the whole Corona mania, whatever it is. And it, ostensibly they say, oh, it's because of, uh, you know, to help minority achievement. And it's like, what are you talking about? That is doing the exact opposite uh, it's called enabling whatever. And it's like, you know, you talk to a, any normal human being, they're like, these, no, like, I don't want to be treated differently because of some, what I look like or what I sound like or where I'm from. I don't want to be treated differently. I want to be held to the same standards. But there's other people, I, got, I call it the do good in class that uh, don't seem to seem that, think that way, Adam. You know they don't. I don't even know what to think about such <laughs> horrific policy. <laughs> um, so I got a I, I got a question for you. What do you think? I mean, ostensibly, people come out of K through twelve and they get shuffled at far too high a natural rate into higher education. They come out with the certification and then they get jobs in the government, boo, and private sector. Yay. What do you think is the private sector seeing or looking for when they're analyzing these these graduates? You know, if they're coming out this stupid, <laughs> well, you know what? what yeah, what's well, the point? Well, what does well, the employer more, even any more the it, value it, it, of that college degree? That I think for a couple generations was looked upon as highly valuable, and it could really move you forward. Now yeah, it has the, yeah. the equivalency of what a high school degree used to be like because it, with extra years tacked onto it. <laughs> I used to think it was worthless and just a waste of money. I don't think that anymore. I think it's a negative oh. uh, uh, <laughs> certification. Okay. I think things have gotten so bad in the universities that a lot of employers are going to look upon you negatively if you have one. <laughs> it's possible. Like Google doesn't, uh, in a lot of these high tech, uh, firms, they're not looking for the accreditation. Um, they're looking for you to answer some questions and see if you can think. Yeah. And you know, if the conformity and the, and the wokeism and the leftism is all you're learning in college, well, that's probably a detriment to a functioning company, right? It likes to build things and make things rather than virtue signal and yeah. play the victim every five seconds. Yeah. I'm wondering this last kind of early part of the 21st century so far, we have this crossover of who the parents are. The parents were, you know, my parents' age and now like in that, and you know, they're starting to be my age or younger, sending their kids to college. And it's, it's really interesting because say my parents age the baby boom generation would that that the college degree was man that was it if you if you did that like you had you had something else my dad was the first one in his family to get a college degree that he knew about and that was very important um my mom's side of the family everybody had got a uh if you didn't get a college degree it was like what are you doing and so but now you know when, when i it was kind of coming out of high school into college. I'm like, yeah, I, I okay, I'll, I guess I'll go. I, I'm supposed to go, and uh, I did all the things to be able to go, and so I'll go. But if I were in that same situation now, and you know, granted, I'm much older, I and knowing what I what I do know now, I I would not go. I'm I'm really glad I did go to where I went for many reasons. But if it were a decision of me coming out of high school, going into just some random college, say any college, pick it on a map, I wouldn't go. Yeah, I wouldn't either. And, and I wouldn't like send you, my I'm kids. And I guess that was my point. I wouldn't send my kids if they didn't want to go. If they expressed that I don't want to go, I said, all right, well, here's we're going to make a plan. about Agreed. 
Um, when you and I went though, it was a lot harder to learn the things you would want to learn without going into that institution. But now with the internet, with all the oh, books yeah. out there, um, there's a book out there that can give you a classical education if you just follow their, uh, you know, follow the recommendations of what to read. Um, and there's, you know, there's MIT courses online for free. The Khan Academy does great things. Uh, the great Tom Woods and his Liberty Classroom. Right. I mean, there's ways to learn things and even be guided, um, not just, you know, randomly walking through the library or the digital equivalent and just picking up books at random. No, you can follow a course that can give you any kind of education you want. All you have to be is a little bit disciplined. Goodwill, Goodwill Hunting did that, as we know. <laughs> right. You mentioned at MIT. He decided to be a janitor at MIT, not by his choice, but. And he loves apples. And he loves apples. I have a theory. I just just came to me. I want to throw it past you. I don't know how I feel about it. Back in the day, it was the case that, you know, not all humans are created equal. Some are smarter than others. And we had some mechanism in society where we would funnel who seemed to be the brightest kids into higher learning and they'd go off and get these fancy degrees and be the smart educated people. And over the intervening, you know, decades, if not centuries, we've embraced a democratic ethos by which we're trying to get more people into these, uh, you know, places of higher education. Some, some of the reasons behind that are crony, but not all of them, you know, you could certainly make an argument, not that I would, but that if you could just get everybody into college, well, then we'll all be smarty pants and making, you know, white collar uh, salaries. Um, but if the distribution of human intelligence is in a bell curve and it always has been, well, what we're doing is we're shoving, you know, dumber and dumber and dumber people into institutions of higher learning and, the only thing that can happen is you have to sort of dumb down both the entry uh, qualifications and the uh, qualifications to pass out with the with the diploma, right? I mean, yeah. is there any other is is that part of what we're seeing here? Yeah, well, it's definitely it definitely dumbed down as more people are allowed, and 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 more people on a raw basis, but also as a percentage basis of yeah, percentage. I'm talking about society. Yeah. Uh, there's just more and more spots in universities and colleges and more and more universities just opening up. But it's interesting you say that about, you know, the the best and brightest, for instance. And back in the day, shall we say, it's like, oh, he's so smart. He should have been involved in the space program. Or <laughs> he's so smart. He's, he's like a rocket scientist. And it's like those best and brightest jobs, like it or not, were being funneled to the highest echelons of government jobs. And this was mm. once a proud com country that those smartest people, or, or at least a, a good portion of those smartest people coming out of college, some would become in titans of industry, but the other ones would have a legitimate need or want to go into these higher levels of government or government jobs and and be, do their patriotic duty. Nowadays, you get the lackey kind of mid achieving person is that's that's now a candidate for the government jobs. Like it or not, the teaching profession by and large, it's particularly below college, largely those folks are not in it for the money or success. They're in it to influence people, influence children in particular. Journalism jobs are the same way. It used to be like, I'm going to be an intrepid reporter and and hold these people's feet to the fire. Not anymore. They're there. They don't care about how much they get paid. They care about influencing public opinion. And that's where we're at these days. We're not getting the best and brightest coming out of college to do the best and brightest jobs for the next generation. Well, I don't know about that, Brian. I mean, you've seen Kamala Harris, right? Yeah, I have. Point, <laughs> point taken. 
I mean, Jesus, I was just trying she to find out. She might not a, be uh, able to understand what 15 times 4 is. I mean, she's... <laughs> I was just trying to find out what 15 times 4 is. I mean, this is my coy way of trying to get you to say the answer. And now you've got me all depressed, uh, Brian. 60? <laughs> I sure hope so. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 that, you notice my tone of voice. Not that confident after all this. I will say that the young lady who the rest of the children gathered around in apis fashion to say, oh yeah, 48, 48. She did stand up straight and tall and say uh, confidently, well, it's 48. Yeah, 48. Maybe that's all you need in this world. Okay, yeah, there was- or maybe college is just a made up fake world and uh, we're not teaching anything real there. That's the other possibility. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? So the, the sample size, very small, very small. I, and I, I hope it's atypical of results. Mileage may vary. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, um, we always encourage people to go to naturalorderpodcast.com and check out the show notes page for this particular episode. Uh, but this uh, even more uh, urgently than most, because we're going to have some links to some of the problems in higher ed that we've been talking about, a little uh, a little documentation, and also some things you can do to get yourself or your child uh, a good education without spending all this money and without going into one of these demon infested, expensive institutions of higher learning, yeah. so to speak. It was a good discussion, Adam. I'll send folks your way, heymannature.com, heymannature.substack.com. I think both will get you to the same spot. Uh, they do. Yeah. Adam, like I said, has the email. And he's got uh, what, what latest of a as we record this the latest of a two part interview with uh, Stefan Kinsella is is out and more to come. Yes, indeed. Just videos. search Heyman Nature in quotes on YouTube, and do it in uh, quotes. You'll find the show there and also at Rumble. Yeah, do it in quotes, folks. Because do it uh, in quotes. <laughs> you'll get my, a lot of Michael Jackson stuff. Otherwise, uh, such a great yeah, song. Yeah, and. For my stuff, BrianDoleary.com is where you go. Podcasts, emails. Also, we're doing a lot of the same stuff. Glad to be a part of your lives here on Natural Order. Sign up for all three email lists if you'd like. Uh, we'd appreciate it. And uh, anything else, Adam, that we missed? Probably no, missed, that's it. Um, probably missed a lot. but We probably missed a lot. Um, but I don't know. I was so depressed by that short little 20-second video. Yeah. Um, check out uh, our stuff, folks. I think you will like both my writing and Brian's writing. It's very interesting. I love everything you put out, uh, Brian. It's really good stuff. All right. And we will uh, chat with you folks down the line. Show notes for today's episode can be found at naturalorderpodcast.com slash EP20. That's naturalorderpodcast.com slash EP20. 20. And you should also head on over to heymannature.com for Adam's stuff and briandeoleary.com for Brian's stuff. And of course, as always, naturalorderpodcast.com.